Here we have an example of a linear transformation from R2 to R2, and we need to build a standard matrix. Standard matrix means we need to use the standard basis of R2. So what is important to notice is that the domain is R2 and the codomain is also R2. So the same domain and codomain. So when we have a basis for R2, in this case standard basis, we are going to use it for R2, right? For the domain and codomain. Because it's the same space. So we use the basis for the problem. Here they asked us about standard matrix. That means we use standard basis. So our input space and output space is the same, so they have the same basis, obviously. So what I need to find is the representation matrix for the linear transformation T relative to the standard basis for inputs and outputs. That's called the standard matrix. So again, domain and codomain are the same, and the basis of choice for this example here is the standard basis for R2, so R2 is domain or codomain, so it's the same basis for both. So that's why I have SS, standard basis, inputs and outputs. is the same linear space. So how do we compute the standard basis? As usual, we apply the linear transformation to the basis vectors. So the first basis vector, 1, 0, we apply the linear transformation to it, and we get 1, 1, and then we apply the linear transformation to the second basis vector and we get result negative 1, 2. So what is important here is to remember that a linear transformation works on objects. It takes a vector from R2 and gives back a vector from R2. So it takes a vector from R2 and it gives back a vector from R2. So these two people here are the true vectors of R2. Very important to notice, these are vectors of R2. Now, what we know about vectors, especially, let's say, in R2, is that the components of the vector are the same as the coordinates of the vector in the standard basis. That's true for all vectors in Rn. The coordinates of the vectors, the entries, so the components of the vectors, the entries, are equal to the coordinates of that vector in the basis S. So this is equal to V S. Okay? Very important to remember. So now we know that the standard matrix will be simply these two images in columns in correct order. So this is our standard matrix for the linear transformation T. How do we use it? Well, that's straightforward. You have a definition here, you can use it straight, or you can use the standard matrix. So let's say we want to know what is T of vector 2, 7, for instance. We have two options. We can use this formula here straight, because it's given, or we can use the matrix. So I'm going to use the matrix just for fun. Uh, obviously vector 2, 7 is equal to its coordinates in standard basis, which are 2, 7 obviously, the same components. So I'm going to use the matrix, the standard matrix, so SS. So what I get as a result are the coordinates in the standard basis, which is the vector also. So this is minus 5, so, and then 2 and 7 is 9. So this is obviously equal to the vector negative 5, 9 itself. Because the coordinates in the standard basis are the same as the components of the vector. So this list here is the same as the vector. So T of 2, 7 is a vector minus 5, 9. Okay. So 
that's quite easy with the st uh, standard matrix. So now, let's say I have the same linear transformation, but I have a different basis. So here, again, the same linear transformation, R2 to R2, the same definition. And what I want is the representation matrix relative to the basis B. So it's not a standard basis. It has a different basis for R2. And it's given by these two vectors, 1, 1, and 1, 2. Again, the domain and codomain are the same. It's R2. The basis of the choice for this problem is basis B, because I want the representation matrix relative to the basis B. So basis B is here. So I use basis B for inputs and outputs, obviously, because it's the same space. I just use one basis for R2. Now, it happens that R2 is the domain and codomain at the same time, so the basis is B for R2. So what I need is the representation matrix, or the transformation T, relative to the basis B for inputs and basis B for outputs. Okay, so what I need here is to work on the vectors V1 and V2, so T needs to be applied to them, and then what I'm going to get is the vectors in R2. I need to find the coordinates of those vectors in basis B. So it's a more complex procedure. So first step is apply linear transformation as always to the basis vectors. So apply it to, to, to V1 and apply it to V2. So I get these vectors. Again, linear transformation works on objects. It takes a vector from R2, it transforms it into a vector from R2. So these two guys here are true vectors from R2, the true objects. Okay? So what I need now is coordinates of these objects relative to the basis B. Because these guys are true vectors. If you wish, they are in standard basis, if you wish to say that way. But these are true, true vectors. I want their coordinates, because I need the outputs in the basis B, I need the coordinates of these two guys in basis B. So that's what I do. I need to find the coordinates. How do I find the coordinates of a vector in basis B? Well, I need to solve the linear system, the augmented one. So my two basis vectors are here, and then slash, then the victims. And I need to solve by Gauss Jordan eventually to get the coordinates of these two vectors in basis B. So that's the standard procedure, we know how it works. So I do the work, and after solving, we get the coordinates in basis B of TV1, and these are the coordinates. So these are the coordinates of the image of V1 under action of T. The coordinates in basis B are here. And then the coordinates in basis B of the image of V2 are these guys. Okay, so that's good. So now I take these and put them in the matrix. So my trans uh, representation matrix relative to uh, representing the linear transformation T relative to the basis B. So that's how we write it. Representation matrix of linear transformation T relative to basis B of inputs and basis B for outputs is here. So the first guy goes in the first column, second guy goes in the second column. That's it. So this is my representation matrix for a linear transformation relative to the basis B. So you saw first thing, I apply the T to the basis vectors, and then I find the coordinates in basis B of those answers, right? So that's what happened here. I apply T to the basis vectors, I get a vector. I'm applying linear transformation. Linear transformation works on objects. Input is a vector, output is a vector. Now I need to find coordinates of this vector in basis B. I need to solve these guys. Okay? Once it's done, the coordinates of the vector 0, 3 in basis B are negative 3, 3. And coordinates of vector minus 1, 5 in basis B are negative 7, 6. So that's what we got here. Very important. And then we build the representation matrix. Now, how do we use this? Well, it's very simple. 
if I'm given, let's say, the coordinate of some vector w in basis b, let's say it's 1, 1, just to make it simple, find what is t w. Well, that's not a problem. I have this transformation matrix. What I know is that if I apply T, oops, B, B, to the coordinates of the W in basis B, what I'm going to get are the coordinates of the image in the basis B. That's by definition. So I just do the matrix vector product. So negative 3, 3, negative 7, 6. So this is BB times 1, 1 in B. So the output is negative 10 and 9 in basis B. So these are the coordinates of the image. I'm looking for the image. But what I got are the coordinates of the image in basis B. So if these are the coordinates of the image in basis B, that means that by the definition, so d of w is minus 10 times the first basis vector from basis B plus 9 times the second basis vector from basis B. So now all I need is to find who the guys are and write them here. So the two vectors, 1, 1 and 1, 2. So what do we get here? Negative 1 and 8. So T of W is a vector negative 1 and 8. Ta -da. Now you can ask yourself, but who's W? Because all we got is the coordinates of W in basis B. Well, okay. W is, by the definition of the coordinates, 1 times V1 plus 1 times V2. So this is, so V1 was 1, 1, and V2 was 1, 2. So this is 2, 3. So W is a vector 2, 3, right? So the image of this vector under the linear transformation is negative 1, 8. That's how you use it. You need coordinates of the guy in the basis B. Okay? So let's make it a little bit more complicated. What if I am given a vector but not its coordinates in basis B? What do I do? So another example given. So let's call it Y as vector 1, 1, for instance in R2, find T of Y using this linear transformation, uh, the representation matrix. So first thing I need to do is, because I have a vector, the object in R2, to use this representation matrix, I need the coordinates of the vector Y in the basis B. So first, Step one, let's say, find the coordinates of y in basis b. So how do I find them? Well, we solve, so basis b was this, we need to solve this thing. So by Gaur Jordan and somehow, okay? So let's say we got the answer, it doesn't matter what it is, some numbers. You will compute it, say that this is actually some A and some B, so some numbers. Fine, now I have the coordinates of the vector Y in the basis B. So what's the next step? Well, no big deal. Step two, I will use so we are going to use this representation matrix. So the coordinates of the image of Y under the action of T in basis B are given by 
this simple product here. So this is equal to so negative 3, 3, and negative 7, 6. And this is, let's say, A and B, whatever it is. These are the coordinates in basis B of the image. Now, step three. Obviously, you're going to solve it and find the numbers, so it's going to be cuter. So, now the image itself, I use the definition of the coordinates. So, it is negative 3a, negative 7b times the vector v1 plus. 3a plus how much 6b times the vector v2. So we just plug them and we get the values out. So the vector v1 and the vector v2. So you compute and you get the image. So that's what we do typically. If we are asked to find the image of some vector under the action of the transformation T, but we need to use the representation matrix in the basis BB. First thing is to find the coordinates of the vector in basis B, because this thing needs to multiply the coordinates in basis B of a vector, and as a result, you'll get the coordinates of the image in the basis B also. So this thing, our representation matrix, dictates what you need to do. So just be careful, follow the logic, and it's going to be fine. 